Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'd like to talk about a piece that came out in the Wall Street Journal about right to repair. As many of you who watch this channel regularly know, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of the Wall Street Journal. They've published some fairly fallacious stuff in the past that has no basis in fact or truth. And something tells me that if somebody, you know, like me wanted to publish an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, I might just have a slightly more difficult time than the corporate lobbyist that got to publish that garbage several months ago that I went over in a video. However, there is a journalist that works at the Wall Street Journal that did an amazing bang-up job covering right to repair, and I wanted to share her story. Her name is Joanna Stern, and she put in a lot of effort to ensure that she wrote an accurate article. It says here, how the right to repair might save your gadgets and save you money. New legislation aims to provide more options for fixing our broken gadgets. A journey to fix two MacBooks illustrates the repair restrictions put in place by Apple and other big tech companies. This is by Joanna Stern, and it says, the name, MacBook Pro, date of birth, 2017. Cause of death, water. So much water. Second chance, replace corroded parts in the motherboard. Just call me the Mother Teresa of laptops. I saved that MacBook Pro from being just another sad hunk of metal in the Eway Cemetery. Okay, fine. A computer repairman saved it. See, with no Apple Care Plus to cover accidental damage, Apple said it would repair the machine in five to seven days for $999, nearly its original price. The Apple genius said buying a new laptop would probably make the most sense, or more sense, which, you know, big surprise coming from the Genius Bar that they would tell you, oh, you have a minor problem? Just buy a new one. Then I brought it to an independent repair shop. It was fixed within a day for $325. It's exactly what Apple and various companies don't want you to do. It's exactly what the proponents of right to repair want to make it easier to do. Welcome to the fight to give us more repair options. Don't worry, you don't have to roll up your flannel sleeves and get out your tool belt. This fight is mostly about giving independent repair shops the ability to fix without so many roadblocks and saving you money keeping your older gadgets alive. The movement has gained momentum recently. In June, the Fair Repair Act was introduced in Congress. It's very similar in wording to bills that have been introduced in over 20 states, including New York and Massachusetts. None have been enacted. Then, in July, President Biden issued an executive order asking the FTC to make it easier and cheaper to repair items you own by limiting manufacturers from barring self-repairs or third-party repairs of their products. And again, the fact that this administration, at the federal level, even said something about it, not even did something, but just said something about it, is astonishing to me and an amazing step forward. Those efforts are different, but they all ask for something similar, that anyone, not just a megacorp that made your device, be able to access the information, manuals, parts, and tools to make a repair. It can be your smartphone, laptop, TV, or even your tractor. And you got a picture of me fixing the MacBook Pro, and she spelled my name with two N's. God bless you, Joanna Stern. I devised an experiment to see how this might affect us normal non-tinkerers. I asked my IT department for two broken MacBooks and took them around to various repair shops. What I learned is that replacing the dead machine or spending its initial cost all over again to fix it shouldn't be our first inclination. Very good. It's possible to save money and time by seeking an independent repair shop, but only if that shop has the information and parts it needs to do the repair. For this column, I focused on Apple and MacBook specifically, but repair restrictions like these can impact the maintenance of all types of gadgets from many big tech companies. Also true, it's not just Apple, and I think it's great that she included that in the article. It says here, the options. My journey began with a 2020 MacBook Air and a 2017 MacBook Pro, both of which had fallen victim to laptop's greatest foe, water. That is, unless you have a T-Series ThinkPad from when IBM and Lenovo started making them liquid resistance, uh, you know, 17 years ago, but that could be for another video. I took them both to various New York City gadget repair establishments, which it turns out resemble the city's pizzeria in their astounding variety. Apple Store. Apple quoted $999 to repair the Pro, $899 for an accidental damage repair, plus $100 for labor. The Air would cost less, $799, but remember, it costs $999 to buy a new one. So let's just go over the ridiculousness of this. A 2017 machine that is actually worth, has a lower resale value now would cost more to fix than the uh, MacBook Air that has a higher resale value now. Because the MacBook Air she brought in was a 2017 A1708 that has a considerably lower resale value than a newer MacBook Air. We believe the safest and most reliable repair is one handled by a trained technician using Apple genuine parts, an Apple spokesperson said. We continue to expand Apple's offerings to meet our customers' needs. Now, I actually had a good phone conversation with Joanna about this on why I thought uh, that was bullshit. So that was their response to everything that had taken place in this article and in the repair. And one of the things that I did during the repair was I showed that I am using a, ma a board that came out of an actual MacBook for donor parts. So the donor parts I used to fix her MacBook was a 
another MacBook. So the only way that those parts would not be genuine is if Apple themselves are selling MacBooks in their store that are not genuine. But that's how you can tell that they're not actually trying to create an argument and they're simply using copy pasta because they don't even understand the issue themselves. Oftentimes you'll have a PR representative reach out to respond to these stories and they'll say something that it makes no sense whatsoever, which is what happened here. I'm using parts from a MacBook, from an Apple store, to fix another MacBook. The only way that those parts are not genuine is if Apple themselves are not selling genuine MacBooks, which is absurd. Now, I did push for her to contact Apple, speak to them, and maybe get something that's a little bit better than that, just a nudge, and they did, and we'll talk about that later. Authorized Apple service. Mike's tech shop and Apple sanctioned repair shop quoted me $1,170 to fix the Pro and $870 to fix the Air. Why even more than Apple? Because for this type of issue, small shops like Mike send the systems out to Apple Repair Center and charge for the effort. This is an important point because many people will say, I want to have it fixed by an authorized repair center. And what Jess and I will say is that when you go to an authorized repair center, they don't actually fix it. They're a mailing depot. What they do is they mail the device back to the manufacturer and they charge you for the privilege of doing so, which is one of the things that authorized repair centers are often forced to do. Even if they actually did want to do a repair, they are not allowed to do the type of repairs that we do within their model. They're not authorized to repair. They are authorized to serve as a shipping depot that sends it back to the manufacturer while simultaneously charging their own fee on top, which is going to be substantial because they rent space in the middle of Mid Midtown Manhattan. Independent repair shops. These shops have zero affiliation with Apple. Simple Mac, which is run by Sunny, and Rossman Repair both did a diagnostic on my two machines. On the Pro, Rossman quoted 325 to fix the corrosion on the board. Simple Mac quoted 350 that's why Sonny drives a more expensive car than me. <laughs> anyway, I opted to go with Rossman Repair, which is owned by Lewis Rossman, a right to repair advocate who often on his popular YouTube channel speaks out against Apple's policies and teaches people how to do their own repairs. As you'll see in my video, I watched Mr. Rossman replace the corroded Wi-Fi circuit, power and LCD chips on the board with chips from an old MacBook board, which he called a donor board. Apple would have replaced the whole motherboard with a new one, thus the higher price. The company spokesperson says, Apple have found individual chip replacement to be unreliable, I wrote this whole column on the fixed machine, which is, seems to be Joanna's dig at Apple's statement that it's less reliable. So let's dig into that. Once I explained that the response on genuine parts was copied and pasted and disingenuous, because the entire video and article hinged on me using an actual Apple motherboard to fix this one, they went back and I guess they went one level up and found a different piece of copy pasta, which admittedly, um, you could say if you are replacing the entire board rather than just uh, replacing certain chips on it, that may have a chance to be more reliable. That's at least an argument where we can go back and forth on it and go back and forth on statistics where they're not just outright lying. One thing I will keep in mind is that A, oftentimes when they replace the boards, they are not giving you a new board, they are giving you a board that they themselves refurbished, and I've gone over that numerous times on my channel with regards to the 820-3332 boards inside of the A1398 late 2012 15-inch Retina MacBook Pros with NVIDIA 650M GPU issues as a result of the buck power supply not being properly soldered onto the board, where they have a little black piece of rubber that is holding it onto the board rather than properly soldering it. But also, if you were to dig in and just take a look at what they said about it being unreliable, if you were to just think, look at what customers have to say, you could see over here that the Apple store closest to my store is 4.1 stars on Google Maps. Mike's tech shop is 3.8 stars on Google Maps. Yet, if you look at my store, my store is 4.9 stars on Google Maps, and Sonny's is 4.8. So, if we are considerably less reliable, you think that that would show up in the ratings for these particular stores, and they are not at all. The worst rated one there is Mike's tech shop. The best rated one there is yours truly because our repairs are actually not that unreliable but let's continue the article i also appreciate joanna pointing out that she wrote the whole column on its uh, the, the fixed machine with uh you know in its own little paragraph and it seems like it's kind of throwing shade at that idea that it's less re less reliable thank you joanna the limitations. The MacBook Air wasn't so lucky. Neither Rossman nor a simple Mac could repair it. For starters, it was more damaged. I believe the words I used for her is that it looked like this was brought through a sewer. But the repair people didn't have parts or information for the newer model to even attempt to fix it. From watching Mr. Rossman repair the Pro, I learned that independent repair shops need these two things to do the job. Parts. He had donor boards for the Pro, but not for the Air. These parts are unsold by Apple or with its consent. Rossman and other repair shops buy them through third parties or take them from recycled systems. Rossman says Apple restricts chip makers from selling these parts too, which is correct. Many of the chips that I need to be able to fix that MacBook Air are not chips that companies like Intersil or Texas Instruments will sell me. Information. 
He works off of documents called schematics and board views, basically maps of what's in the system. You'd be here for weeks trying to do a single repair for the customer without having access to the board view as well as the schematic, he told me. Mr. Rossman and others obtain Apple's in-house documents, often leaked from people who work at the company, from sites on the internet. Schematics and board view is over here, as someone is, being, is fixing it. When a repair is needed, a customer should have confidence that a repair is performed correctly. It's more than just the parts, it's about the training Apple provides, the tools and diagnostics, safety procedures, protecting customer data and privacy, the Apple spokesperson said. Let's go over that a little bit. So the way that they protect your data on those new machines where the data soldered to the board is uh, they don't fix it, they destroy it and it goes somewhere else. But if you're concerned about your data, then I highly suggest that you check out a video that I did a while ago where an Apple contractor released a sex tape of a customer onto Facebook. This is a video that I did, I believe, uh, two months ago. This was on June 6th over here. And this video is uh, Apple Authorized Repair Leaks Customer's Sex Tape during iPhone repair. This is not something that has been in the news from independent repair shops, but it is from the first party manufacturer. But if you're talking about this, Tools and diagnostics. What tools do you offer so that I can do a proper motherboard repair, Apple? Diagnostics. What schematics, board views, or diagrams, or anything is Apple offering, if you're Apple authorized, if I become authorized, can I get a schematic Tim Cook? Can I get a board view Tim Cook? Can I get access to ASD, AST, any of that shit? It's, it's just aggravating. The spokesperson also pointed to Apple's independent repair provider program, which provides access to Apple genuine parts, tools, training, service guys, diagnostics, and resources. Mr. Rossman and Sonny Lynn, the owner of Simple Max, said this Apple program doesn't provide schematics, correct, board views and many specific parts that make repairs more affordable customers. They also say it can require the shops to share customer information with Apple. Fact check true, and I don't want to do that. The fight. Access to those things is what right to repair legislation and the recent executive order mean to provide. Proponents say this is good for cuts consumers. Companies shouldn't control how a product is fixed or determine when it should be replaced, they say. It isn't like we're asking for something that's impossible. It's something that's easy to do. Provide parts, provide information, and let people feel like they really own their devices. Tim Wu, a special assistant to President Biden for technology and competition policy who worked on the executive order, told me. Tim Wu sounds like someone I get along with. It gets to deeper questions about autonomy and control, which is a central point that I go over on this channel on a regular basis. How whether it is your government or whether it is companies, whether it is private corporations trying to keep you from fixing things, or whether it is a government organization, you see more and more people trying to take away fr the freedom that you have over your life and your technology and the who are looking to control what you do with your life and your technology more and more and more. It is a recurring theme and is something that we must put a stop to. Tech companies and their lobbyists, such as the industry group TechNet, ridiculous, have a counter-argument. Consumer safety. If there's an unreliable repair, the device can potentially harm you. How many repaired MacBooks from my store have harmed customers? I have been in business for 13 years. This should be a very easy, low-hanging piece of fruit here. Companies and lobbyists reminded me that lithium-ion batteries can blow up. They say if more information is available about devices or the parts are in sanction by the company, there may be more opportunities for hackers to breach them. And your private information might be in the hands of a shady repair person. Yes! Your private information may be in the hands of a shady repair person. The contractor that Apple is underpaying and not vetting properly. So many paywalls. Anyway, back to this. We don't believe state law should mandate that manufacturers provide a how-to manual for any product and provide it to anyone who asks, says David Edmondson, Vice President of State Policy and Government Relations at TechNet, which counts Apple, HP, and Google as members. We believe that this legislation would eliminate the security and privacy protections that are contractually in place between the manufacturers and their authorized repair networks. Except, I went to an authorized repair shop and was told it would cost even more than Apple! So I'm sitting here with a choice. Do I pay Apple $7.99 to repair the air or pay Apple $9.99 for a new one? It really isn't a tough choice. Some might say it isn't a choice at all. Good article. Good article. Really good article. And what I would say about the safety, security, privacy, safety, explosions, concern, that which is presented without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. I am tired of the what ifs. I'm tired. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? What if when someone is fixing the brakes on their car with parts that they bought from AutoZone in their driveway because you don't restrict access to fix the brakes, what if they do a bad job? And while that person's on the road going 80 miles an hour on the highway, they're not able to stop and they kill somebody. You shouldn't be able to fix your car. You shouldn't be able to work on your own vehicle. Maybe you shouldn't even be allowed to drive a vehicle. You could apply this to anything. You could apply the what if fear mongering where you have no citations to anything in society. The difference is back in the day, we weren't okay with it. 
we saw it for the bullshit that it was. Today, something changed, and we don't. We stop seeing it for what it was. We stop calling it out when we saw it. And we've slowly but surely kind of gone on this path to where we just believe this stuff, hook, line, and sinker. It's up to you. Do you want your property rights back or not? Do you want to be able to fix what you own? Or do you want these companies to control you, hook, line, and sinker? That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Great article, Joanna. Great article. See you in the next one. Bye now. You also got featured in the video, Mr. Clinton. If they watch the video, they'll get to see you. Yeah, you're a good boy, Mr. Clinton. You're a good boy.